How do we define the term free fall? Free fall is a motion of a body where gravity is the only force acting upon it. It is the motion of a body where gravity is the only force acting upon it. Right? So let's jump straight to 3.2 and do 3.2.1 so 3.2.1 is in let's convert the speed to each ball a is the count so now let's go through our information and see what is happening here uh, so we are told that elena drops a ball from a height of eight meters so before we go any further we know that vi is equals to zero meters per second right because the ball is being dropped and then let's choose our direction that we take it as positive right uh take up as positive let's just go ahead and take up as positive and then uh, the ball was dropped from a height of 80 meters and we want the velocity at which it strikes the ground so we have delta y being equals to minus eight meters because the ball is going down and we take it up as positive right uh which other information do we know apart from that uh we know fully well what acceleration is acceleration will be minus 9.8 meters per second squared right and then what we're looking for is uh vf right so now we have these four variables which equation can we use to find vf uh, it will be easy to see that we're going to say that uh vf squared is equals to vi squared plus 2a delta y right we are governed by the information we have and nothing else so vf is going to be vf squared is going to be equals to zero squared plus two multiplied by minus 9.8 multiplied by delta y which is minus eight so we're going to take square roots on both sides right so let's take square roots on the left hand side and take uh, square root on the right hand side uh, so if you compute that you're gonna get vf being equals to 12.8 five q meters per second downwards right we must not forget that we're talking about the velocity at which the ball strikes the ground right so that's how we would essentially solve the problem and then now uh 3.2.2 so let's do 3.2.2 let's calculate the speed at which ball b was thrown downwards so let's go ahead and look at the information that has to do with ball b and see what's going on our statement continues to read as follows after 0 0.6 seconds another learner throws a second ball b downwards from the same height so we have the same height right so we have uh, delta y still being equals to minus eight meters for ball b and what else do we have uh, we are told that both balls a and b they hit the ground at the same time both ball a and b hit the ground at the same time so let's put some thought into that and see what is happening right so ball a was dropped first and then after some time ball b is being dropped but then they hit the ground at the same time so clearly ball b must be moving faster than ball a if it's thrown 0.6 seconds later and they hit the ground at the same time so what are we saying we're saying that delta t for ball b will be equals to delta t for ball a minus 0.6 right it was only thrown 0.6 seconds after and they reached the ground at the same time so we can sort of find a delta t for ball b by using delta t for ball a so up to so far we have uh, the displacement and the time which we can calculate and we have the acceleration the acceleration is always going to be equals to minus 9.8 meters per second squared and then what are we looking for we're looking for vi so we have four variables here there's obviously an equation we can use to find vi from these variables but at first let's find the change in time for ball b using that of ball a so let's go ahead and look at the information we had for ball a right uh, we have vi we have vf and we have a so we can say that uh, vf will be equals to vi plus a 
delta t of ball a right we are interested on uh, ball a here so what is vf vf is minus 12.52 right so the velocity at which it strikes the ground and then it's dropped if it's dropped vi is zero and then acceleration is minus 9.8 and then we're looking for delta t of ball a uh, so real quick you will realize that uh, delta t for ball a will be equals to minus 12.52 divided by minus 9.8 so we just have minus 12.52 divided by minus 9.8 uh, which will give us 1.2776 seconds right uh, so now we can go ahead and see uh, that delta t for ball b will be equals to 1.2776 minus 0 0.6 which will be equals to 0 0.6 seven seven six seconds so now we have delta t for ball b right so since we have delta t for ball b we can then uh, using the information for ball b say that delta y is equals to vi multiplied by delta t plus a half a delta t squared right so what is delta y we know fully well that that is minus eight and then what is vi vy is what we really interested in right and then delta t 0 0.6776 and then plus a half minus 9.8 uh, multiplied by 0 0.6776 right so we solve in for vi uh, so if we make vi the subject to the formula we're going to get uh, vi being equals to minus 8 and then we take this term here to the left hand side if we take this term to the left hand side then this minus here will be a positive right so we're going to have minus 8 plus a half uh, multiply by 9.8 multiply by 0 0.6776 uh, we're supposed to have squared here we're supposed to have squared here because it's a half a delta t squared and then uh, everything divided by the coefficient of vi right so we're supposed to have squared here too uh, which is 0 0.6776 uh, so let me just go ahead and put that in my calculator real quick and see what i get so i have minus eight plus a half multiplied by nine point eight multiplied by zero point six seven seven six squared and then everything divided by zero point six seven seven six and then i'm getting uh, a initial velocity of minus eight point four eight six one which is just eight point four eight six one meters per second uh downwards right down downwards let's go ahead and calculate uh the answer for 3.3 .3. so we have 3.3 .3, uh, which says that ball a bounces off the ground to a maximum height of 6.5 meters above the ground so let's calculate the velocity of ball a as it bounces off the ground now we're considering the motion from the time it bounces off the ground until it reaches its maximum height right uh, so we know fully well that when it reaches its maximum height we have vf is equals to zero meters per second but we know that acceleration is still minus 9.8 meters per second squared and then now we have a delta y which is equals to 6.5 now we have 6.5 meters and what are we looking for we're looking for vi right uh, so from the variables we have here you should it should be easy to see that uh, we can see that vf squared is equals to vi squared plus 2a delta y so what is vf squared that is zero maximum height and then what is vi it's what we're looking for and then plus 2 a minus 3.8 and then delta y that is 6.5 right so if we make a vi in the subject of the formula we're going to get uh, minus vi squared being equals to 2 multiplied by minus 9.8 multiplied by 6.5 so we can just divide both sides by minus y right so that we can get rid of this minus on vi squared so if we do that vi is going to be equals to the square root of 
So we have the square root of 2 multiplied by 9.8 multiply by 6.5 which will be able to get an initial velocity of 11.29 meters per second upwards right because that's the velocity it bounces off the ground with and then now to the last question uh 3.4 3.4 is saying that uh, let's get a velocity time graph for the motion of ball a from the moment it was dropped until it reaches its maximum height after the bounce right so let's go ahead and sketch our axis and see what we can do here so we have uh, the y-axis and then we have uh, the x-axis and then on the x-axis we have uh, the time in seconds and then on the y-axis we have the velocity in meters per second right yeah we're supposed to have something like this and then our starting point um, the ball is being dropped right so we must start with a velocity of zero then and then after that it starts going down and then its velocity is increasing so since we take it up as positive we must have something of this manner right and then it's going to start strike the ground at 12.52 uh, meters per second right so this is the point where it starts strikes the ground and then it bounces off when it bounces off now it has uh, a positive velocity of what of 11.29 so we're supposed to have 11.29 here and then it starts going up uh, until it reaches a maximum height and the velocity is close to zero again and that's essentially our entire motion.